Hi, it's Mr. Mazurkowitz, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the process of anaerobic respiration. Now, anaerobic respiration is going to be making energy, ATP, without the presence of oxygen. Now, this differs from regular cell respiration, which we sometimes call aerobic respiration, because we said that is a process that does require oxygen. So, if you recall from a previous discussion about cellular respiration, there were three steps to it. There was the first step called glycolysis, followed by the Krebs cycle, and that was followed by the electron transport chain. Now glycolysis, if you recall, was an anaerobic process. This first step didn't require oxygen. It wasn't until we got into the mitochondria with the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain that we said oxygen was required for those steps, so therefore those were aerobic processes. So anaerobic uh, respiration is pretty much going to be focused on just that first step, glycolysis. Now the only thing is that glycolysis then has to be followed by a different step that we're going to call fermentation, so that we can go back and keep doing glycolysis again and again. So our lesson essential question throughout this video is going to be how does the process of anaerobic respiration differ from aerobic respiration? So right off the bat you should already be thinking well one requires oxygen, the other one doesn't. But there will be a few other differences as well as a few similarities uh, that you should be able to compare and contrast the two. So before we go into anaerobic respiration, I just wanted to recap aerobic cellular respiration or just regular cell respiration. So if you recall, uh, the first step was glycolysis. And in glycolysis, we took a glucose molecule, we split it in half or broke it down into two what we called pyruvate molecules or pyruvic acid. But the main thing we focused on was saying, hey, we got two ATP molecules out of this. We actually created four, but two were used for the process, so we said, okay, we net two. After that, we took those pyruvate molecules and we moved into the uh, matrix of the mitochondria. And that was followed by the second step known as the Krebs cycle. Now in the Krebs cycle, we created another two ATP molecules, as well as this is where we created uh, the CO2. So the carbon dioxide you breathe out was a result of that Krebs cycle. But again, we created another two ATP molecules. So we're a total at about four. After this, we then move to another process, the last process known as the electron transport chain, which created a total of about another 34 molecules of ATP. And it was here that oxygen was required. Uh, oxygen combined with some of the electrons at the end, it picked up a couple of hydrogens. So as a result, that's the H2O that you breathe out. So throughout this whole process, uh, what we got was a formula that looked like this. It was Glucose plus oxygen gave us CO2 from the Krebs cycle, H2O from the electron transport chain, and then a total of about 38 molecules of ATP. Now, without oxygen being present, though, we said oxygen came in at the end. If oxygen isn't there, there's going to be nothing there to take those electrons at the end of the whole process. It's going to cause the whole process to come to a halt, uh, and that's not good. That will be deadly because you can't produce your ATP. It's going to stop the whole process. So anaerobic respiration, again, is a process that doesn't require oxygen, and what we're pretty much going to do is just focus on this first step of glycolysis. But in order to go back so that we can keep doing just glycolysis, we're going to take those pyruvate molecules we created and do a process known as fermentation so that, again, we can keep going back and creating those two ATP. So in anaerobic respiration, there's two types. Uh, and it's all based off of the type of fermentation that you do. The first one is what we call ethanol fermentation. So this is going to start off exactly the same way we've already talked about. So we're going to have our glucose molecule here. We're going to undergo, undergo excuse me, glycolysis, and we're going to create our two ATP total. Remember, we created four, but we used up two. And as a result, we're still getting those two three-carbon molecules called pyruvate or pyruvic acid. But again, in order to go back so we can keep doing glycolysis, because we can't go into the mitochondria, oxygen is not present in this case, we are going to undergo a different process that we call fermentation. So in the uh, case of ethanol fermentation, what are we going to do with those pyruvate molecules? We're going to break them down and we're going to create a molecule called ethanol or ethyl alcohol as well as carbon dioxide. So all we're really doing here is recycling those pyruvate molecules. We're breaking them down more or less, uh, creating ethanol and carbon dioxide so that we can continue to do glycolysis again. So the formula in this case for ethanol fermentation looks like this. We start with our glucose. Now notice how oxygen, it's not plus oxygen because this is anaerobic respiration. And as a result, we created ethanol, carbon dioxide, and then two molecules to be exact of ATP energy. So what sort of organisms do this? Well, we see ethanol fermentation in something called yeast, which are single-celled fungi. So now you might be more familiar with yeast because we use them in baking. This is actually what causes dough to rise. So in that event, when we're using yeast for baking, they're actually doing regular aerobic respiration. What's actually happening is we're adding yeast to the dough. They're breaking down the sugars in that. Uh, they're releasing carbon dioxide as a result, making their energy. And that carbon dioxide gas causes bread to rise or the dough to rise. So you might have seen aerobic respiration before. 
Where you might be less familiar is uh, where we use yeast and where you've seen yeast do ethanol fermentation is in creating alcohol, so the alcohol that humans drink. So uh, with yeast, what we actually do is we'll put them in a container with sugar, but this time, like you can see in this picture, we put a lid on it or we uh, put a stopper to starve them of any oxygen. Well, when we do that, they can't do aerobic respiration. They're going to have to switch over to anaerobic respiration, specifically ethanol fermentation. So what they'll start to do is break down those sugars uh, and they're going to be creating ethanol or alcohol. Uh, they'll be creating carbon dioxide, they'll be creating their energy, and as that alcohol content builds up, the more and more alcohol that they're producing, it starts to kill them, uh, they die off, and then what we simply do is remove the yeast from that, and then you have alcohol that we consume. So if we leave the carbon dioxide inside there, that's going to cause that bubbliness that you might see in beers or champagne, or like you see in this tube here, we're going to release some of that carbon dioxide, and then you get non-carbonated drinks like wine. Uh, but pretty much what we're doing is we're harnessing the power of ethanol fermentation, anaerobic respiration, to create alcohol. Now, what about other organisms that don't do this? There's a different uh, type of fermentation that we call lactic acid fermentation. So these are going to be in different organisms that are going to be doing the same similar process, but instead of ethanol, we're going to be creating lactic acid. So again, the way that this process works is pretty much the same thing. We're going to start with our glucose molecule. We're going to undergo glycolysis, creating our two ATP molecules. We're going to create those pyruvate molecules, and then we're going to use the process of fermentation to break those down so we can keep doing glycolysis. But this time, uh, it's different. Instead of ethanol, uh, these organisms are going to be producing something called lactic acid. So this is actually a process that you and I do. Uh, in animals, we're going to see lactic acid fermentation take place when not enough oxygen is present. So our formula here uh, looks something like this. We're going to take glucose and no oxygen is needed. So we're going to break that down into lactic acid and again, a couple of ATP molecules. So in the case of you and I or in other animals, we do this when we're doing short, intense uh, sorts of activity, whether it's sprinting or weightlifting. And if you've ever done any of these activities, you start to notice that you can't, first of all, do it for very long. And that's because you're not producing a lot of ATP. It's only two per glucose molecule. But it's also what you'll start to feel is like a burning sensation and a fatigue in your muscles. And what is actually happening is you're getting a buildup of that lactic acid. That lactic acid is causing your muscles to start to burn. And eventually you're going to have to stop. And then you'll start breathing heavy and you'll, you'll start breaking down that lactic acid to try and get rid of it. Uh, but either way, uh, we're able to do a short-term sort of anaerobic respiration in order to create just the amount of energy that we need to do short, intense exercises. We also see lactic acid fermentation in uh, bacteria. So some bacteria will do anaerobic respiration, specifically lactic acid fermentation. An example of this is the bacteria lactobacillus, which is the bacteria we use to create yogurt. So what they actually do is they start, uh, you know, we'll put them in something like milk. They'll start to break down the lactose, which is the sugar in milk. And uh, as a result, they'll be creating lactic acid which will then start to cause that milk to curdle, and that's pretty much how we get yogurt. Um, so you've seen something like lactic acid fermentation before, whether it's the yogurt you eat or the exercising that you do, uh, but either way, it's a type of anaerobic respiration. That really is all there is to anaerobic respiration. So again, it's pretty much glycolysis with adding on an extra step of fermentation. If you're a yeast, you're gonna do ethanol fermentation. Uh, animals and some bacteria are gonna do lactic acid fermentation. Uh, if you guys need to go back and rewatch anything, feel free to, but at this point, you should be able to compare and contrast how does anaerobic differ from aerobic respiration, and I thank you guys so much for watching.